Welcome to MCN. It's long-term test review time and this video is all about the Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GT and Emma Franklin, you've been running this bike this year, haven't you? I have, yeah. Welcome to our video. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, so how long have you had this bike? So I got this bike back in about late March, I think. So yeah, yeah. what's that? Five, six months? What kind of mileage have you done? approaching 6,800 right. so oh, fair a, a fair few it's yeah. the most mileage I've done in a long long many yeah. years actually so that's testament to it's this testament bike. To the bike yeah definitely this was one of the sort of most talked about bikes of, of last year when it was unveiled wasn't it and yeah. we've ridden it on the um, launches and in group tests um, but the long-term test all about was actually like to live with day to day so yeah. I've asked you to compile two lists 10 things you like 10 things you don't like yeah so let's start with your likes first. So we'll start at number 10 and work our way up to number one, sure. the things you like the most. So number 10, styling. Styling. I mean, look at it. I mean, it looks quite modern and fresh, yeah. doesn't it? You know, I'm not going to say for a Suzuki, but you know, they have a little bit of sort of styling. They're a little bit a conservative, little bit aren't conservative. they normally? Yeah, definitely. This is, yeah. this is like bang on trend, isn't it? With yeah. all its sort of like angular alien sort of style looks. And people do comment on it all the time and say how good it looks. Yeah, it's and a good looking I, bike. I have to agree, really. So. Okay, number nine, the build quality. Build quality. I know. It's another thing that is, um, you know, where you say Suzuki's got this reputation of supposedly having bad build quality. Yeah. But I've ridden this bike in all weathers. <clears throat> you know, it's freezing cold today, it's salt on the roads, and yeah. it's done, you know, a lot of miles. And I think it looks really, really good. I mean, I can't really see many areas on it at all. No, it still um, looks immaculate. It is, yeah. I mean, it does get looked after. But yeah. it does also, you know, I'm not one of these people who dry it after it's been, you know, out in the rain, you know, it'll probably go back into the garage wet quite a few times, yeah, I would say. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a crazy person with my cleaning regime, but it's still holding up yeah. really, really well. It looks great still. And given so, the amount of miles you've done, yeah. which is equivalent to a few years worth of use for most Definitely. average people. So, yeah, yeah that's really, held up really, really well. OK, tyres. You talked about the current Continentals. Yeah. Uh, road Attack 4 and the Michelin Road 6s. That's right, yeah. So what do you think of those? So I initially put it on the Road 6s at first and they were like super glue. Yeah. <laughs> it just felt... Because standard they have these Dunlop Road Sport 2s, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Not very good. Yeah, not very good. I mean, they were bad. I didn't have any moments on them, but they just didn't have that Doesn't feel, that you connection. To the ground. Yeah. yeah, so, well, they weren't good. They weren't bad. Um, they weren't bad. They weren't good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then I put the Michelins on because obviously I heard lots of good things about them. And Road six. Road six. Sports touring tyres. Yes. Yeah. And they felt really, really, you know, they felt warm literally as straight away. They've yeah. got that real mechanical grip feel going yeah, on. Yeah. Um, so I enjoyed them. But then it started to get a little bit nicer, the weather. And uh -huh. I started to think about track days maybe. And they were just a little bit, I think the profile at the front was just a little bit too... A bit flat. Uh, a bit flat. Yeah. And I wanted a more sort of racier feel without going the sports bike um, yeah. tyre route. So I settled on these, which are the Conti Road Attack 4, mm -hmm. which still are sports touring tyres, but they call them like hyper touring. I think. Oh, okay. So um, I wouldn't say, I mean, they're still really, really grippy, but they don't have that like monumental super glue style yeah. feeling that the Road 6s had. But that said, they're still like, you know really good on days like today you know full wet in the dry but key they just feel that little bit more firmer mm -hmm. um and they've got a more sportier yeah. profile front as well so i've enjoyed these a lot and did you take them on track these i did take them on track yeah and they, they were good they were they were good yeah i mean yeah. my problems on track stem to something else okay we'll come on to we'll that get back to yep Okay, this is one of my favourite things about this bike as well. Number seven, you've put cruise control, things you like yeah, about it. cruise control. Yeah. I mean, like I say, I've come from sports bikes and I've been hell-bent on sports bikes for years and years and years. And then having, I didn't think I'd use cruise control. And I know everyone says that. And then you get it and you just think, oh, can't live without it's it. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when your wrist starts to ache a little bit, you can just go and it's on. And yeah. yeah. Keep you to the speed limits. Keep you to the speed limits. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's no, just every home should have one. Definitely, definitely. Um, okay, number six, dash and dash. the built-in nav. 
Yeah, so this has got a spangly TFT dash, which is... Suzuki's super, best, easily, yeah, isn't best, it? Yeah, best, easily, mm. yeah. And it's also got smartphone connectivity as well, yeah. which is ace. And it's got a, um, a sort of app that um, you can access from your phone. So you download the app onto your phone, and that's Suzuki MySpin. And then within that, there's an all, another app, like a navigation app that you can download onto your phone. And then once it's synced to the dash, um, it will display the navigation. It's yeah. called Sidejik or something. Right. And it's a little bit basic, yeah. but it works. It, works. You know, it hasn't got like countdown to the next turn or whatever, so you've got to keep an eye on it. But just having that nice clear sat-nav view on your mm. dash, on your beautiful clear dash has been really good. And I use it all the time, really. Hard to come back from. It is hard to come back from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number five, the performance of the headlights. Yeah, another revelation. Yeah. I can now see in the dark. Brilliant. Fancy that. I mean, they've got a really nice crisp white light and a really good broad spread of light as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the first time I rode back, I think I was on the A43 coming down from the south coast and it was really dark and I was sort of tentative because I'd not ridden in the dark for um, a long time. But on this, it was like, wow. It turns it yeah, into daytime. It turns it into daytime. It makes so, a big difference. Def definitely. Okay, number four, panniers. Panniers. <laughs> It's total revel revelation. I'm a convert, you said. I, I know. <laughs> I feel embarrassed to say that. I totally do because, yeah, maybe it's 10 and 40, but oh my God, panniers, where have you been my yeah. whole life? You know, I was one of these people who would just shove everything into a rucksack and it'd be cripplingly heavy. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I thought that was the best thing to do because <laughs> panniers are dull and boring and old, and but they've been great. I mean, these... They're extra, I think they're about a thousand quid extra, yeah. which is a lot of money. Um, but they've been watertight. Uh, I can get a full face lid in there so I can just slam it in, which yeah. has also been cool. You know, if you go to like a uh, BSB meter or something, just slam all your kit in and you don't have to walk around. So yeah, proper, proper eye opener for me, these. Yeah. They're really good. There's no frame, is there as such? So when they're off, you've got a clean looking. Yeah, so the back end is like bike. really, yeah. really nice to look at. There's just like a little sort of, um, locator sort of leg but you hardly see it yeah. at all right number three on podium positions now aren't we oh yeah comfort, comfort. another revelation yeah i mean <laughs> when i first got this bike because i had it into the head it was a sports tourer um yeah the sort of wide bars were a bit of a shock yeah. um but that it was like a super 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 naked almost, yeah absolutely it? yeah i was expecting it to be a little bit more sort of elbows in mm. but um I've had a few big days on this. There was one time during the summer where I went from, I went from Peterborough where I live, then I had to go up for a family um, do up in Lancashire. And then from there on the same day, I had to go down to Brands Hatch for a race meeting. And I was dreading it, to be honest, because mm. I thought that's, that's big mileage. And I just thought maybe I should split it over two days, but I really wanted to get to Brands that night. And so I did it. And it was brilliant. I pulled up at Brands after, God, I don't know what the mileage was, maybe 600 odd miles. Really? About that, I think. Wow. I might be uh, overstating that a little bit, but we'll call it 600. Yeah, why not? But yeah, I arrived at Brands and people were just like, oh, you just look so fresh. Yeah. And I felt fresh. And, you know, the next morning yeah. there was no aches and pains. No. So that's, that's been... That's quite a rarity on a, a bike. Yeah. One thing I would say is the seat is might just be a little bit too soft. Yeah. So... It could do with being a little bit firmer because yeah. you do get that sort of shuffly bum after good, a while. Good position. Yeah, but good position. Good wind protection. Yeah, really good. I mean, I did change the screen. That's the skid mark screen. Yeah, little flip up. Yeah, and it doesn't suit me as well as the standard screen. Okay. So I'd probably change that back. But right. maybe if you're a little bit taller, I mean, I'm five foot six and a bit, mm -hmm. it might work a little bit better. That just channels air into my face. Uh, okay. But the aerodynamics are much better on these kind of bikes than tall rounders. Yes. They're much louder, aren't they? Yeah. These, this, these slip through the air really quietly, which is a, an advantage of a traditional shaped sports tour like this. Yeah. Right, number two, the engine. Performance, yeah. character, grunty, revvy and really fast. Yeah, it's got it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what more do you want? I mean, it's based on that prodigious, the old K5 G6R 1000 engine, isn't it? I mean, what a, what a motor, yeah. you know? It's probably, I've heard it defined as the uh, the, the best in line for motor, sort of architecturally that was ever created. Yeah. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's got that stump down below, so you don't really need to rev it. 
but because I've come from a two-stroke background, I do rev it. <laughs> yeah. So it's got the best of both worlds. You yeah. can still sort of, you can be lazy with your, you know, your gear in, short shift it, or you can just flail it and yeah, yeah just, it's awesome. And it's got that GSXR character as well, which is sort of like quite raspy. I wouldn't say it's a smooth, smooth engine when you're getting sort of tiny bit raw yeah a bit mm. raw and i like that it's sort of yeah. i think bikes these days they're sort of sanitizing things a little bit aren't yeah. they if you look at the new ducatis they've got that ducati character but yeah they've sort of smoothed That's everything right. else haven't they but this has still got something it's got metallic a bit about, about it. it yeah number one well, we've touched on it a little bit with the comfort but the the riding position is the thing you most like about this yeah. bike. Yeah. Like I say, it was it was an eye opener because I was expecting it to be a little bit more traditional sports tour but just having those flat bars mm. is brilliant. You just you know, you're up tall and you can you've got that leverage as well and Yeah. Yeah, if you look at sort of the superbike riders, I think we've discussed this before, haven't they? But they've all got their big sort of Yeah. Almost, almost like flat like bars on, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. for that reason, isn't it? You can boss it around a yeah, little bit more. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's my favourite thing about it because it it feeds into that comfort, the overall comfort. So you've got control and long yeah. distance comfort as well. So, so as a sports tour, it ticks all the boxes, doesn't it? It does. It does. Well, not all of them. Oh, not not <laughs> all of them. Let's talk about your your dislike. So. We'll go, uh, we'll start at the, the, the most minor quibble and we'll go up to the thing you like the least about it. So number 10, um, this, the switch gear. It, it's a bit fiddly, not positive, and the cruise control button's on the right hand bar. Yeah, so the buttons are just a little bit, and I've noticed it more now that it's getting into winter. They're sort of quite, they're small, well, obviously they're small, but yeah, they're just quite difficult to... Especially with big gloves on. Yeah, mm. yeah, and a big curse because you've got to, you hit the back button when you're trying to get into the nav menu and stuff like that and you've got to start the sequence all over again yeah and just the uh the cruise control activation button is on is on that handlebar which means i've got to like exactly you shouldn't have hand. anything on the right bar should yeah. you when you're riding yeah. you should all be it on the left it should be all on that i know so, exactly what you mean yeah it's just a minor quibble yeah but. uh okay so number nine we've touched on it um with regard to the screen so you fitted an aftermarket screen but the flip up isn't really for you no i mean the standard screen there was no adjustment to it um yeah that's the thing compared thought... to a ninja 1000 sx which is adjustable yeah. yeah so that was a bit of a ooh, that was a bit strange uh, for a bike like this <clears throat> but that said i didn't have any need to adjust it because it worked really well mm. um but in the name of journalism i thought i'd try some yeah, other yeah. things um so i saw that from skid marks and put it on and it's, it's for me, it's not yeah. not as good as the standard. It's very personal really. thing, isn't it? Screens, definitely. How high you sit on the bike, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so number eight, OE tires. We touched on that OE again tires. before, didn't we? Yeah. The Dunlops. So, like I say, there was nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with them. I mean, no. didn't have any moments with them or anything, but there was nothing. They're kind of acceptable, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They just do a job. Yeah. But definitely if you've if you've got this bike just slam some more modern tires or not i mean OE that ones. goes for most bikes doesn't it oe yeah. tires aren't the same as the replacements you buy no. they're generally built down to a price they're generally built with different criteria in mind to be maybe more stable in a straight line and grippy in corners so yeah. um yeah replacement tires are definitely the way forward absolutely but yeah no i agree when we when we've ridden this a few times it never really feels that sure footed but as you say it doesn't do anything wrong no but it, there's a lot of room for improvement yeah and it's only once you put those tires on that it makes you realize how yeah, yeah exactly. how lacking the other ones were okay number seven brakes a bit meh a bit meh <laughs> i know i mean they work clearly yeah. you know i've not had any you know heart and mouth moments but it's that suzuki thing is they just do they just do what they do without mm. you noticing them which yeah. i guess is a good thing isn't it i suppose but Maybe it's because, I don't know, I've come from more sports bikes and you get that initial bite mm. feel. You don't, um, that, yeah, which you don't yeah, get on Which these. you don't get. More which, wooden feeling, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, had I had the bike for a, little, a few more months, I would have liked to experiment with some new brake pads because mm -hmm. um, I had a Gen 2 Hayabusa in 2012. Yep. And that sort of had the same problem. And I ended up putting some Brembo um, pads in it and it improved it quite a bit so just having that extra sort of yeah. bitey pad material um yeah it gave me a little bit more feel and i would have liked to have done that with this because i think it might have 
helped yeah. a bit. It's got the hardware, hasn't it? It's got proper Brembos yeah, it's got and proper. it's just, yeah, it could do braided lines maybe, better fluid, better yeah. brake pads. But if it had all those things, then the price would shoot through the roof, exactly, wouldn't it? Exactly. So. <laughs> okay, number six, um, panniers. Bit clunky to, to get on and off. Yeah, so like we say, they don't have any framework on them. And maybe this is down to me being a pannier novice. Um, but I find that they, they, they are quite clunky because you've got to line up two sort of pins in the top. Yeah. Um, and then also get, get a little sort of mm. slot in the bottom of them to link onto mm. that rail um that sticks out and it's just a little bit it's a like, bit of a wrestling match isn't it, it is isn't it? It's yeah. like, and it, obviously the more in a rush you are um to get them on the, the less the, it's going to work the less it's going to work <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and i noticed on i think it is the left hand one there's like a little rubber boot that's on the bottom sort of locating rail and that yeah. sort of flew off within oh and, and you lost uh, it yeah 50 oh. miles of me having so the bike it's so, shaking. so it's a little bit shaky but yeah. um it's it's you know i've not I've not lost them and it's no. all fine. And it is just a case of putting another rubber boot on, but yeah. You want uh, something that just clicks in, don't you? You throw it on and it goes click, just, but yeah. A bit more positive, mean. yeah. But apart from that, the panniers are good, aren't they? Yes. Uh, okay, number five, things you're not that keen on is the throttle response, especially in its A riding mode. Yeah. So I'm a little bit of a, of just leave all the, I don't really play with the modes yeah. very much. I mean. I always thought it was a little bit of a gimmick, and I think it was Suzuki who actually brought in the mode That's right, with selector. those, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, G6R1000 yeah, or something. Yeah, was um, it A, B and C modes, wasn't it? That's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I've always just left it on A mode, because A must be the best. Exactly. But, um, Turn it up to 11. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know. Um, but I think I've got you to thank for this, because I think you borrowed this bike for something. And I noticed when it came back, it was on B mode. And I was yeah. like, oh, Neves has put it on B mode. What's all that about? <laughs> and then I rode it and I was like, oh my God, that's, yeah. that's why. And it's just like so much, just a nicer, smoother sort of... Uh, definitely for the road. Definitely. You probably yeah. want that instant response on the track, don't you? Yeah. But it's too much it's for the road. It's just too much, yeah. 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 So wise, you are wise. Thank you very much. <laughs> I probably just knocked it onto B yeah. without realising. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, number four, no orange fuel warning lights. Oh, I know. I'm, I don't know why this gets my goat so much, but it does. Why is there no orange war fuel warning light? What's so wrong so with So you've got a having... gauge, you've got a digital gauge. So you've got a gauge, yeah. yeah, which is there, and it'll start flashing at you politely when it wants some fuel in it, yeah. and then a little bit more impolitely. You're not when quite it... sure where you are with it though, are you? No, and it's sort of like, you've got to look at the gauge to know mm. where you're at. And obviously I've, never, I've not run out of fuel because I've not had an orange warning light, but it's just something about having an orange light. You can see it, can't you, without yeah. looking? Yeah, and it's, yeah. I don't know, I've just been coded to, Exactly. To react We've grown to up orange. with more analog dashes. With, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Just, it would just a little thing. Just a little thing. Okay. Uh, number three, the connection with the phone drops out when using the built-in nav. Oh, and only be re-established when you've stopped. This is so annoying. And I don't know whether it's this system or my phone. Yeah. Um, so I can't really say, but I've got a, a Samsung A51. Uh-huh. Um, and like I say, you'll be riding along, programmed your sat nav, and then you'll notice that the dash has gone back to its normal display with the revs and speed and stuff. So you've got to re-establish the connection and you can see in the top bar, it shows you whether the phone's connected or not and it sort of scrolls through. And then after a few minutes, it's showing that it's connected. But in order to stop and get the sat nav screen back on, you've got to pull over and oh. stop because it won't let you access so the menu until you're stationary. So if you're on a motorway yeah. and you need the nav to know where... Exactly, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really annoying. But like I say, I don't know whether that's the system or just my phone, mm. but it's hard to say. But it's really yes, annoying. annoying on a touring yes, bike. Definitely. Uh, number two, uh, the vibration from the engine. <sighs> it's so bad through the seat, it stops you from revving it hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be a little bit I know of you, I know exactly what you mean now. Yeah, it's... Um, like I say, you know, I love I love revving bikes, um, but I don't enjoy revving this one because it's a bit it's a bit too intense. Um, at like eight thousand over eight, so you're getting towards the top end of the. It does buzz a lot, and it'll mm. buzz through the pegs, buzz through the seats, and it just feels like it's angry, and it you know. You almost feel like you want to throw another gear at it exactly, to calm it down. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it needs a little bit of yeah looser gearing. It's interesting you say that. When we've ridden this bike in isolation, it does feel a bit buzzy. 
But then when we rode it against the Kawasaki, you realize how buzzy it is because oh, really? the Kawasaki is just buttery smooth, it's super smooth and you can kind of place where the bike fits in the world when you ride it against other bikes, yeah. which is one of the good things about the, the way we test bikes and MCN 250s and stuff. And yeah, it highlights how zzz, yeah. plugged into the national <laughs> grid it feels. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the thing you dislike most about it is the rear suspension. Oh. Fine for the road, but no confidence on track. Yeah, I think this reared its ugly head when I upgraded the tyres because I think once I did that, then that ex sort of exposes yeah. problems with the suspension. Puts more suspension. force on the suspension. Yeah. yeah, so like I say, I was enjoying it on the road. I did mess with the um, standard suspe uh, suspension settings at the rear fair, so I whacked up loads of preloads and I give it a little bit more rebound damping. Um, but it was when I took it to Cadwell Park on the mm. Suzuki day that I really sort of like, oh, what's yeah. this? Yeah. It really knocked my confidence, to be honest. It? Yeah, it did, because I just couldn't couldn't hit an apex and it was just wallowing yeah, around. It was just yeah, getting yeah. worse and worse and worse. Um, so that left me with a little bit of a quandary because I was thinking, it's, it's good on the road, really comfortable, you know, down bumpy lanes. I thought it was it was really good. It was one of the most composed bikes I've, I've ridden. But yeah, on track, it's it was just hard for me to get hold of and yeah. it actually actually put me off wanting to do more track days this ah. year because I was like oh yeah and I didn't think it would be like that so um, I sent it to Maxton and we put on an NR4 shock mm -hmm. which isn't their most racy shock it's sort of like designed for road riders yeah um, and we've also had a respring and revalve at the front and on the road I, I think it's given it a little bit more air of quality to it yep. like i say it wasn't bad to begin with on the no. road um but it does feel a hell of a lot more composed and together and there's sort of more feel from it yep. now um but i've kind of run out of year to yeah to really get another track day would you recommend changing the suspension to anybody if i was to keep this bike i would i would do it yeah because yeah. if i wanted one bike that's made me ride as much as this has on the road this year um, and like I say, I've done my most miles ever. Well, not ever, but for a, a good many years this year. Yeah. Um, but I also wanted something I could just, because only like one or two track days a year or something and just have a blast on it. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely, I would upgrade the suspension because I think the shock's uh, 630 quid and I think the front forks are about 400 so it's like a thousand pounds yeah. extra yeah extra job so i'd yeah I'd definitely do it if it was and you've got bike. proper adjustability there as well yes. you? every click yeah. makes a difference doesn't it yeah. compared to standard yeah and this is even good we've got an optional um rear preload adjuster fitted now which ah. is a bugbear of some owners who... well yeah this has got the c-spanner job isn't it exactly, and the kawasaki has yeah. got a, a winding job ah, remote okay. so yeah it needs yeah. it so it, yeah yeah um i haven't prepared you for this but I've just seen some bits on your bike <laughs> some add-ons <laughs> I have got as, some add-ons as well as well as the suspension what are these they're uh, um, Oxford uh, hot grips because oh, this Perennial. bike doesn't have heated grips to standard it doesn't have it? heated it's grips it's a bit of an emission for a sports tour isn't it it is yeah so these would be full whack today wouldn't they yeah <laughs> they are really good actually <laughs> good price as well because often you find that um, OE um, yeah. heated grips wouldn't melt a snowman's fingers yeah, yeah yeah and they're really expensive as well aren't they exactly so the oxford ones are good the other thing i spot is that, um, that is a scott oiler scott oiler how's that um to be honest i haven't properly set it up okay i think so i need it. it's like their electronic system and it's got um accelerometers in it so okay. it knows when it's going but good, good idea for these conditions yeah I found that it just emptied all its oil out onto the floor. So. Right, that's not so <laughs> yeah. good. But I think that's down to me not reading the manual yeah. and setting it up. Okay, so overall then, it sounds like your, your pros outweigh the cons. Yeah, you definitely. Say? definitely. You, you enjoyed your time with it? Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's turned my head and it's made me sort of um, appreciate a different style of bike and uh, what it can do for your riding. I mean, I had sports bikes and I was hell-bent on them, but it was sort of... I spent more time looking at them in the garage mm. than I did riding them yeah. and my yearly mileage was just going down and down and down but whereas this it's just got me out riding you again wanna, yeah exactly yeah. so so would you buy one yeah I think I would yeah yeah fantastic well thank you very much no, for showing you. us around your bike and thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more long-term test videos coming up soon